You're listening to Artie Tune, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. This is Detlef Schlich and today we dive into the deep and unknown exciting ocean of the creative mind together with uh, Debbie, probably I'll pronounce it again wrong, Sure, Sko, Sko. It's a hard one Sko. to pronounce. Scow, Debbie Scow. I'm getting sometimes confused because uh, it's, it looks like a show we say, we say in German. Show. So I'm happy. I'm totally happy to have her uh, in my show <laughs> um, because we had yesterday already a, a huge big glitch. It was a desert storm in California because we, because we connected with the Maya Desert uh, close to the close to the uh, Nature Three Park National Park, and uh, we couldn't get through any. But today we start again with fresh energy, and uh, yeah, I'm so happy to have my show, Debbie. Hi. Happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, it was really a disaster. The listeners yesterday, uh, it was so difficult. We 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 were trying three hours and um, to reco yeah, recording. Uh, I mean, with us. I see now the recording works, so so Debbie, I, see, I just see it, so I'm happy with that as well. That's great. Um, like always, first of all, um, I have to explain it again. Debbie, you are in the Hall of Attitude now. For the listeners, I explain it. So, so it's it's an idea. Actually, actually, I like this idea. It's it's for all because Debbie is as well an artist, a photographer, a, um, a, a rock and roller, a punker, actually, uh, and and probably a lot of other things as well. And uh, I thought it would be nice for 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 musicians and for artists if they if they, if they now yet not in the Hall of Fame or Hall of Hall of Rock and Roll, they are at least in the Hall of Attitude. And and Debbie is in the Hall of Attitude, and the proof is actually you can find it on my website. She is on a Mac. So 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 if you want to, if you fancy a Mac with 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 Debbie and myself, or if you fancy a, a coffee with with Debbie and myself, an Irish coffee actually, then uh, yeah, then get the Mac. <laughs> <laughs> on www.altitude.com. But later. I will explain more. First of all, it's great to have you in my show. I already mentioned that, Debbie. So we're going to go through that. Um, um, in, we have three episodes every Sunday, 10 o'clock in the morning um, from, from now on going. In the first episode, I would like to go with you through through actually so your, your growing up as a, as a child and and your influence from, from, from child on, on, on to, to, to a young, young adult. And in the second part, I would go. I would like to go with you to Dublin, uh, the time when you used to live in Dublin, because um, Debbie, she she was working almost twenty years in Dublin. Uh, was work, was writing for the for the for the for the for the uh, hot press. Uh, it's a music uh, magazine in Dublin, and 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 um, in the band as well. Um, in the third part, then we're gonna go back to we're flying back to 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 the desert. And uh, we we gonna go then we jump immediately in in Debbie's life into Debbie's life uh, in in the um, um, Joshua Tree Park where she's now actually close to it she's living there okay great so that was my explanation I hope it was not too long and uh, we we just let's start so I mean we are started already yesterday and you explained me that 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 that, that you were born in America in, in in South California at the beach site. Mm -hmm. I uh, was raised in Redondo Beach, California. Um, yeah. Astute people might know that that's Redondo Beach is the title of a Patti Smith song. Uh, yeah. I, I don't. She's, I I think she's played there, but uh, you know this was pre-Patti, Redondo Beach, and uh, 
right. when I was teen or so, my mother married my stepfather, who was an ex-Marine drill sergeant. And I got moved to the middle of the desert, which at the time seemed like the middle of nowhere to me. But and, that was later. Uh, that, was, that was as you've been 14, no? Yeah, that was when I was about 14. I was I had finished uh, what we call here grade school or junior high, you know, at the eighth grade. And I was about to looking forward to going into high school and yeah. uh, things, you know, plans. But, you know, what's yeah. that phrase? Yeah. But I'm, I'm interested I, actually in, in, in the elementary school as well. So, so, so as, 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 as you've been a, a very young girl, you told me you, 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 you have two brothers. Uh, one was five years older or is five years old. The other one is 15 years older than you. Mm -hmm. And I think that it could be quite interesting as well. I mean, for, for me too. So, so because I was, I'm born in the sixties, hmm. and and you you're born in the late fifties. Nineteen fifty six. Nineteen fifty six. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm sixty two. Hmm. And um, and and America, especially. The 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 um, Californian Hollywood industry uh, um, uh, influenced a lot. I would say as well the German television making and 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 you know because sitcoms and all that comes comes actually from America, and they I must say they had a great timing in in in, in making sitcoms that, that that was and, and the Germans they they, they I mean now they, they they far more better but but in the in the nineties. They couldn't reach the water, you know. So it was really, really. If, if the Germans were trying to be funny, you know, it was really annoying, you know. <laughs> um, but so I was always um, comparing the 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 the, the, the media scene, um, even the political media scene from America and from Germany, you know, just because I already saw in the seventies, eighties that everything will swap over like a wave, you know. Because because the Germans they didn't have a, a proper ideas if it comes if, if it came to to storytelling and to 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 mass media you know so 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 then then in the, you, you if you if you you used to live in the seventies then down at the beach uh, in California yes. uh, uh huh yeah and the there's a big California beach culture as you probably know anyone who listens to the Beach Boys probably knew that it's uh. It's, it's very active at the time, probably still active. It's a great place to grow up. How how was that for you? I mean, I mean uh, how was it? You're probably so so influenced and as well from 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 this music, or? Well, I loved the Beach Boys. I and I I remember like a garage band being up by my street, and I remember my cousin went to school, went to high school with one of the Beach Boys. So I'm a big Beach Boys fan from, I remember listening to them on the radio as a little kid. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's right. But the beach culture itself didn't really suit me. I'm, I'm kind of more a bookish type. I've got really light skin that doesn't tan. And everyone yeah. there was having brown skin and, and blonde hair. But I'm, I've got the hair part, but I'm not tan. And I'm not, uh, you know, I, I just didn't fit the fit the beach culture thing so i would i you know i was kind of the one that got laughed at a little bit or made fun of because i wasn't all tan and i wasn't you know i i wasn't hanging out with the jocks those are the sports guys and stuff so you didn't, even, you didn't, you didn't like i mean I, I can understand that i mean i found that it's very ridiculous all this all this this gym things in germany i mean at arnold schwarzenegger as, as he started in, 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 no, in the I, 70s I, with conan uh, even even as a junior high, I wasn't into just hanging out and at the beach, you know. I mean, so, nothing, so... <laughs> you know, like doing stuff or you know. Uh, so 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 you had you, you were already all, all, always different than the others as 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 a young girl. Oh yeah, even I mean, as far as back as I can remember, I've been called weird and arty and all kinds of stuff and 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 introverted and you know uh whatever i it's just i i don't know anything else i'm just i'm a misfit toy there's that that christmas yeah. movie you know with the misfit toys i identified with the misfit toys <laughs> you know rudolph the red-nosed reindeer that was it and they had the land yeah. of the misfit toys 
And I remember as a little kid thinking, well, that's where I belong. Into the misfit land. <laughs> in the in the land of misfit toys. I think it was an island, but I remember thinking, I want to go there. That's that's my kind of people. Um, hang on, Mis misfit toys. Is, is is it is it a show or or what or what is it? It was Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. It was like an animated or 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 stop motion uh, Christmas show, Christmas special that was very big when I was a little girl, and it's still played. Uh. It's it's uh, star Burl Ives was in it as a snowman narrator. Yeah, and it, uh. it was but they had a section that was the Land of the Misfit Toys, and that's where toys that didn't fit in anywhere else were sent to you know, toys that were broken or, or otherwise kids didn't want to play with or toys that yeah. didn't fit in were sent to the land of the misfit toys. And I remember as a little kid thinking, uh, that's my place. That's I, I belong there. <laughs> I might look that up. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really interested in that because it's, it's I think... Burl Ives, uh, if you do Burl Ives and then uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Christmas special, you'll I'm sure you'll you'll get it. Yeah, no, I, I might um... like it if you haven't seen it. It's it's an American classic. It's one of those anyone my age would would know it, and most Probably. of my friends with the Misfit Toys as well. I think the English they have they have a but this is not a Christmas show. It is in general a children's show. The English have have one. Um, um, and, and if 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 you hear the sentence, "Are you sitting comfortable?" You know, so so every <laughs> every English one. Do you, you know this show? I don't. I don't. Uh, doesn't ring. You know, I, I visited England when I was 12, but I, I didn't grow up there. I haven't. I never saw a show as well, but I just know that, that if I say the sentence to English fellows, you know, so I was sitting comfortable and then they, they, have, they know already where it comes from. You know, <laughs> so it, it is all, all spread it all over the world. The sentence It's funny, it's funny. Great, yeah. I mean, I mean, the the, the misfit things. I, I'm, I'm really something. I mean, I was wondering, you know, now I know why, 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 why I was, I was as, as well as well some, some more introverted in younger years. You know, I, I loved it to, to draw sitting in from one table at home and everything. You know, and and uh, I, I mentioned yesterday already. I was not the the big tree climber. You know, so probably if if I if I would try it, I would be probably the first who would fall fall down from a tree. You know, I mean, I already. I already broke my arm from a slide, and 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 if it came to 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 say, for instance, to to go kart driving, mm. I already right. hit yeah. my lips and speed. I, I mean, I, I never was 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 a fellow who who I, I couldn't deal with speed, you know. That was from, I mean, bicycles okay, but even even the the, the 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 little mopeds, you know, so just the scooters. I was fourteen, fifteen, and and my coordination was so bad that that I. That I, I was was driving in through a band and uh, I landed almost in a pub, you know. <laughs> oh no! I I didn't drink. It was I don't know. It's just it's just <laughs> this, this coordination, you know. I mean now not now I'm better, but at at this time machines and and everything what 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 was quick and and speedy it was not my thing, you know. It's 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 probably you can you it's, uh, the equivalent of 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 the of the um. Of the Body gym building. thing in a, in a, in a, at the California beach, you know. So I mean, I oh, probably will. Where they do the bodybuilding? That's a different yeah, beach. Yeah. All is it? Mm. I mean, did they do that as well already in the seventies? I'm. Um, yes, no. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, so you you didn't saw it at this time there. So. But when when you if you if you see you both brothers they were older one was five years older the other one fifteen so I wonder did 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 you buy yourself records or or did you listen almost to the music from 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 your from your brothers did I um could you ask that again did did you did you, you, you buy that? records did you buy, buy oh I buy, uh, yeah yeah I bought records um by the time I was I was buying records when I lived in Redondo Beach. I think I was buying records from the time I was about 10 or 12, as soon as I could have any pocket money. And there was a record store called Crane's Records. And I would take my bike there, I think every Saturday, and I would buy like a 45 or whatever I could afford. And, yeah, sure. uh, and started that yeah. early on. 
And for Christmas, I remember I finally got a, a record player that could play uh, full length records that could play albums. And uh, then I got I got to buy three albums for Christmas. And I remember I bought. Uh, Do you, can you remember which which one which one you got? So you experienced um, Buffalo Springfield again by Buffalo Springfield and the box tops. So I, I just lucked out that I bought some good ones. I could have, you know, I think in part I liked the covers. I remember I liked uh, Alex Chilton's voice. I didn't know who he was then, of course, in the box tops. And, uh, was, and the, Alex Charles, what, you, you, you have to send me the link. Box, and he was in Big Star. Send, 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 send me the link, please. I, 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 I would like to, 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 to look it up. Yeah, he's, he's gone now. He's, he's been passed away for several years, unfortunately. But uh, I, you know, it's, it's just, I, I just got lucky in what I bought. I didn't have any influences. I think I liked, uh, I liked the cover. I might have heard, I know I heard the box tops and Jimi Hendrix, Buffalo Springfield. I mean, they're one of my favorite bands ever. And I don't know that I had ever heard them before. I might've heard them in the record store, but um, you know, I, I just lucked out in the three. I mean, I could have bought three really dorky albums, but I got three good ones. So I, sure. that maybe that put me on the misfit trajectory I went on for the rest of my life. I don't know. Yeah. You see, that's, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I'm quite convinced because I, I started with, uh, I bought my first single with eight. Mm. And that was Mikro Rios, A Song of Joy. Uh, that was quite a, a, a classic song. Is sing a song of joy. Da, 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 you know. Uh, and after that, I bought I bought T Rex, Hot Love. Wow, that's a great one. Um, she's my woman and go. And she's not. Yeah, it was great. And I could play it on on the piano as well. You know, so so that was that was great because it was quite easy. <laughs> And uh, Alice Cooper, School's Out. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember Alice well. Mango Jerry in the summertime, you know. That's a good song. Uh, uh, so so, so th 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 I was quite young, I think, with eight years when, when I started to, 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 collect, my, to collect my anyway. first music. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was because my father, he, he used to work at the WDR. It's, it's a TV station in Cologne. And he was a dolly driver, you know. So, so I... And he had uh, a huge record. I mean, awful records, probably so awful, like 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 the, uh, your brother's ones. I don't know. I don't know what 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 your brothers were listening to. My, my brothers uh, weren't weren't big on music. They they, uh, my eldest brother, I was told, played in a band, and I remember him having a really cool guitar, which I, I wish I had now. I wish he had, um, but he wasn't. They weren't particularly into, to music. I don't think they they bought records or anything it, i think it was the people at, at cranes records they were used to me coming in buying 45s and i guess i had decent taste or whatever for a little kid and i think they kind of steered me right in the right direction you know i'd say oh what should i get and then they i think they they kind of steered me right there ah okay <laughs> you see because i know my first long player what, what i wanted to buy for my first money was was I think Led Zeppelin three? Oh yeah, I had that and one. That, that was was who a lot of love was on it, no? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, I remember listening to it. Uh, I had a I job as a car hop, and I put it on a cassette player in my car. It yeah, was, was the one, one with, of, with, with the disc in it, no? What? It was the disc in it. There was a disc you can shift. You could shift, and then you saw different. Different uh, um, images inside, you know, for, on the cover. Oh, um, no, I I don't remember the cover on that one because I had it on cassette. I was given a ah, cassette, okay. uh, and uh, 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 cassette, and I had this little, not a cassette player in the car, but a little cassette, portable cassette that I put in my car and I played on my way to work. And I was all right, uh, all right, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Car hop. They, no, yeah, they had they had one. It was it was very 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 artistic like like Led Zeppelin used to be, you know. And uh, and we went. I went with my mother because I was quite young. I think I was I was probably ten. Mm -hmm. And uh, as as who a lot of love out and I loved this song, but I don't didn't know who it is and 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 you know. So uh, I just 
heard Led Zeppelin and my cousins, where I normal, normally got the music from, they were not in Led Zeppelin. I don't know why, you know, it was maybe too hard or what, I don't know. So we went to the, to the record seller and um, I had this album. I said, yeah, I would like to have this, you know, so is this from Led Zeppelin? And, and, and she was looking, yes, but she said, but, but I probably, I think this is just instrumental, you know? That means without singing, without yes, voice on it. You know, I, I, I was wondering if, it's, if this is the same in, uh, in English. So, so I didn't bought it, you know, mm. and 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 came back to this experience probably three or four years later, you know. And I think maybe maybe I was lucky because I think if I would start listening to to Led Zeppelin or Jimi Hendrix already with ten years, I would probably uh, get get probably already a, 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 a harder drug carrier uh, as, as, as you know because because this music I mean I'm, you know that by yourself music can 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 really change your change your room you know and and, and your your imagination and everything especially in my case you know so I'm actually happy that I that I didn't start listening to Led Zeppelin with 10 you know <laughs> so, that's what I mean you know so, so because you, you mentioned that you start early as well with Jimi Hendrix yeah. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. And the and Buffalo Springfield and the Box Tops and I I still listen to all three of those albums. I don't do I'm not sure if I have all three of the original albums, but I still ris- listen to those artists a lot. So so how 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 was it? I mean, so then then you were young. You were in, in the in the ele- elementary school, and um, you lived down down at the at the at, at, and, and and you probably start already discovered. Did you play an instrument? Uh no, I I didn't at the time. I well, I I wanted to, and um, my parents weren't all that enthusiastic. My mom wasn't all that enthusiastic. We didn't have a piano or anything. And then finally she said, uh, they had an opening where I could play cello or violin in the school orchestra, you know, take lessons. And I wanted to play cello, but I guess, you know, that was too big. So I I took some violin lessons and I, you know, wasn't that into it. So uh, that was the extent of my musical education in in grade school. So so no, no, no guitar as a a kid. But I, I I love the sound of the instrument when it's in good hands. Sure, sure, I know. I mean, we have like like you know we have we have a, a lot of lot of Irish sessions with with, with great oh, yeah. violin, yeah. Uh, violin players. You know, uh, you know Martin Hayes from you know in in your neck of the woods, and yeah. uh, of course Steve Wickham from the Water Boys is fabulous. You know he's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He is actually. Cool. Um, so I was wondering, when you moved over, you said you moved over to the to the to the desert with thirteen. But so 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 you were in your elementary school, and and you still started then already as a teenager, uh, going mm-hmm. to to a di- different school over there, and uh, before 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 you moved. So that was probably a a, a, a big move, wasn't it? It, it was. I mean, I was I was looking forward to, you know, I think I was 14. I was looking forward to going to high school. I was yeah. looking forward to being in a in a bigger place, you know, because I was kind of bullied in my in my little junior high or grade school or I was bullied. I was beaten up and all that. So I was looking Honestly, forward to. They, 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 bull, they bullied. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I got I got I was weird. I was considered weird. I'd I'd gone to private school for a while. And, uh, but where I was ended up, um, uh, was kind of a poor area. And so I was, again, a hybrid, what I call a hybrid, like I'm a hybrid being living in Ireland and in America, yeah. but I was a private, you know, kind of a, I had kind of a nice posh education on one hand. And then after my parents divorced, not yeah. so much, you know, I got yeah. taken out of school. So I spoke differently. I acted probably differently than then the kids from you know what was you know pretty pretty bad neck of the woods so to speak uh, you know it's it wasn't it wasn't uh, the rich it was the poor side of town so to speak and so 
I was different. And so they, they, they beat me up. You know, that's just what they did back then or what they do now. You know, people, some people are close minded and if you're different, they hit you. They don't know what, so they hit you. And with that, and I took some hard knocks and learned to hold myself, you know, in whatever situation. And school, it was, it was not nice. But I was looking forward to getting away from that. And I was looking forward to going to a, a, a big high school in a, in a cool city. You know, I was going to go to like Torrance, you know, like the Redondo Beach High School, bigger place. And, and then mm. instead we got moved to, I remember that the drive was, we just kept going and going and going till there was less and less. And then we ended up in 29 Palms, which was uh, at the time much smaller than it is now. And it was all all desert and there really wasn't a lot to do at the time here there wasn't very much for kids to do at all i mean there wasn't even a movie theater to go to we had one drive-in theater there wasn't a movie theater. so how, how how far was it from the place where to 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 the next to the next town <laughs> i mean to your school huh? it's a three-hour drive so the desert's a lot different from the beach it's it wasn't At the time, like now, jo Joshua Tree now is really cool and hip and everything. And but at the time, it you couldn't be from a more square place. You know, it was just you know considered nowhere. Yeah. yeah. So so and uh, that 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 was already part of the uh, what's how you call it Mojave Desert. I'm sorry. I'm. Uh, it was already. Uh, it's Mo the Mojave. Yeah. Mo Our Mo Mo Mojave Desert. No. Mojave. Yeah. It's it's Mojave. Yeah. Of the the tribes that uh, that was in this area originally, one yeah. of the tribes, one of the native tribes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, I already mentioned uh, uh, yesterday, uh, dear listeners, uh, that, that that I started to to look into into actually in 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 general because I I I used especially the the uh, um, Californian ideologies uh, in, in my thesis. Uh, art and digital culture uh, especially if, if you compare for instance the the, the gold rush uh, 1850 uh, um, where, where where people came from san francisco i mean los, los angeles was was nothing los angeles was just a just a uh, uh, just a little village and and all all the um all all the gold miners who didn't find gold anymore in los angeles San Francisco, they came to 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 the name is I have to read it again. I read it yesterday, but, it, but nobody here is to... um it was a Mexican village and the name was El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora Santa Maria la Re Re Los Angeles. And it was just built around a little plaza. I mean it's it's it's, it's, it's unbelievable. That's that's just uh, uh, 100 170 years ago or something like this you know so and 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 uh was and and a little bit uh um los angeles had then all of a sudden already 100 you know so from population was between 3000 and 1, people you know so and and it was the kill, killing was 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 every you know that they, they they had cheap workers from mexico from china and from japan over there you know so so uh so uh los angeles was was very 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 well known for for getting getting cheap labor you know so that's that's great answer. and somehow it's still the same nowadays you know if you look into into silicon city S silicon village you know uh um, um silicon valley sorry where where facebook and and google and and, and they're all sitting over there you know so so nowadays we have actually we're still in the in the gold rush and nowadays it's just the, the new gold rush is data isn't it you know mm. and it and it still happens still in los angeles <laughs> mm. <laughs> that, that that that's very 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 interesting as well you know and especially the the, the usual trees i mean they there were loads tons millions of 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 usual you share trees in uh, in in your area, and they them all. You know, I mean, the the the, the railway companies, they, they they and the the housing estates companies, in order to to uh, to 
to make Los Angeles bigger, you know? I mean, that, that was probably... Actually, Joshua can't grow in Los Angeles. The, the Joshua tree themselves can't grow in Los Angeles. They, they can only grow in a certain environment. So it wasn't, wouldn't have been Joshua trees. I mean, Joshua trees can only grow in a very, uh, for example, just in 29 Palms, we don't have Joshua trees. But I go three miles up in the park, in the Joshua Tree National Park, and there's Joshua trees. So there's only a certain climate and certain conditions that Joshua trees can live in. So they, 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 they chopped down a whole lot of trees. Yes, they chopped down, you know, they, they were pretty indiscriminate about what they, what they, what nature they destroyed in, at that time for any kind of what they thought was progress, what they took as progress. This is so it it uh, but it wouldn't have been like Joshua everywhere. Tree, me interrupting it, it just they're a rare, very rare type of tree overall and they can't grow otherwise I think every other person now in, in Los Angeles would have a Joshua tree in their front yard but they they can't yeah, grow pro, 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 that's that's but but the, I mean uh, if, if, if if you imagine that 1850 you know so 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 i mean la is, is now is huge they have they have almost four million people population wise including the countryside as as including the countryside you know and and you were probably somehow also also in as well in in uh, in you before the baby boomer generation uh in in, in the middle of that somehow as well no there? i was the baby generation i'm not that old i'm 65 uh so i was i'm still a baby boomer i guess technically yeah yeah uh, yeah sure yeah uh before would have been you know i don't know what there was before uh you know the great i don't know actually i think i think they started to 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 uh to speak about generations with with, with the baby boomers i don't know what what it was before it was was, was yeah the, the, uh, the, the post-war yeah. generation i don't yeah, oh. that my brother was born, um, both my brothers were born in a great time. And at the time, I remember thinking like they had, they had the Beatles, you know, they could, you know, they were teenagers when it was hip, when it was really great to be a teenager. My brother Larry had, uh, you know, he and his friends would go to the Sunset Strip. You know, we lived in Redondo and Torrance, and they would go to the Whiskey A Go Go and stuff. And I remember thinking that mm -hmm. was incredible. Cool. Uh, they would see the doors and and the birds and all kinds of things and buffalo in, in small pups probably in small in small locations. I right? feel that. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I really envied that music. But then you know when I moved to L.A. just a couple of years after I moved to L.A. there was well, we were part of the original punks, so we had we had ours we had our our and I feel very lucky to be part of that. That's the, you see if 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 I speak here with people. In um, they say what punks, punks in LA? So they they can't imagine that, you know. But but uh, there, um... there was I, the LA punk scene gets uh, it's it's finally getting some credit now. There was the New York punk scene, there was a uh, London punk scene, but because um, people can't imagine Los Angeles, the stereotype of Los Angeles is Beverly Hills and rich people and uh, you know the beach culture, and that doesn't go with punk. But there's there's a big Underserved. There's a lot of misfit kids, misfit toys. I like can me. imagine that, especially especially in LA. I mean, it, uh, um, a lot of areas that are are very uh, extreme poverty. You know, I know I know because I went from being fairly well off as a kid to being uh, in in poverty more or less. Uh, so and how a lot of areas that are uh, that would know punk. There are a lot of working class areas. So how how was it for you? So as as actually as as, as a punker with this energy, uh, being, 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 being surrounded no. being surrounded by hippies. I'm sorry, what? As 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 a punker with with this punk energy, uh, 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 being surrounded actually in a place which 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 is well known, somehow the or, origin of 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 the hippies somehow. Um, it came very naturally to us. I mean, there were, there was, um, uh, and I'm friends, still friends with a lot of people or reunited with a lot of people that I knew back then. Um, 
came very natural to us. There was a lot of people who came from outside of Los Angeles who came from all over the States or all over the world, really, and ended up in LA that were very artistic, um, that, that, uh, you know, weren't, weren't Fleetwood Mac, weren't Eagles, weren't, weren't any of that. And we all kind of bonded together. And that was at the same time punk was coming up. They had glitter before that. And they had a whole glitter scene, you know, which was, you know, David Bowie sort of stuff. And yeah, like, but they, like T-Rex, the, the, the glam rock as well. Yeah, big in LA, you know, but, um, uh, but punk, punk kind of came around and there was, most of us were either working class or whatever, but there was, there was a lot of rich kids who were actually, you know, um, punks yeah. or, or really, you know, could, could understand the punk philosophy. I mean, it'd be hard, you know, you'd go over to their house and uh, they'd have swimming pools and they'd have, and, and, you know, it was a totally different lifestyle than I had, but it was different. Like you'd, you'd have, I'd have a friend whose parents were in the industry music or, or motion picture industry. And, you know, you go see their house and they're living in the pool house. They don't have to pay rent. They're, you know, have this fabulous house. And then I'd go to another friend's house and they'd be living in a, you know, four of them living in a studio apartment uh, off of Hollywood Boulevard, you know, in, in pretty bad situations. So it's, it's, it was, it was a mix. It was a mix. Yeah. Probably very interesting as well. I mean, Debbie, uh, I just see we were already at, at the end of the of the first episode, um, but like to 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 play for us and for for the listeners as well, um, your song from 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 from, from your bands. Uh, from the squeeze when, 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 the the the, uh, the screech owls, no? right. the screech owls. Yeah, my band and. Uh -huh. and, we uh, were when 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 did you found this band when, when was it I'm sorry when 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 did you uh found this I band we, and when I think we formed in 1983 yeah, I've got a copy of the single one second yeah. let's see where did we go there that's it okay and then, yeah. um yeah. we formed in 83 I think the single came out um probably 87. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The band had already uh, broken up. That that lineup of the band had broken up when uh, the record came out, but I wanted to put the record out anyway. And I put it out and it got, you know, very good critical response. And I formed, uh, you know, I moved back to Ireland and I, I kind of formed a revolving unit of people. I found really great musicians, but who weren't always available. So I would get different musicians for almost every gig. So it was, it, it was really interesting because I could have a, a bazooki player on, you know, one show and then a fiddle player on another. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, audiences didn't quite know what to expect, which was good and bad, but it was always interesting. And musicians enjoyed we, playing with us because mm -hmm. I think we all good musicians and it kept them on their toes. You know, yeah, they didn't sure, know sure. it was cross genres. There was a lot of different, there was Irish musicians, and folk musicians, but they'd be rock musicians and jazz musicians. Um, so where did you, where did you record the uh, the, the, the uh, song in 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 Ireland already or still in America? Yeah, we recorded that in uh, Ireland and the UK. We recorded it in at least three different studios. Okay, uh, so we, we might we might go into that deeper as well, and in, into this in the second okay. episode. Um, uh, because I would like to 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 play the song. Uh, and dear listeners, you 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 can you can see um, the video as well, the clip uh, next week, Sunday morning at ten o'clock. Actually, a week later than, than 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 you can listen to the show. Um, and you mentioned that your mother brought some 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 uh, some video material in, into the clip, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I uh, I was living in, in Ireland at the time. And I asked her if she would mind uh, just doing, if she would do some video. And she did. And she, she sent it to me and it was at her friend's house. And there at the end of the video, she's waving. She and a friend are waving from the porch. And so we combined yeah. that with, uh, there was, a, uh, I believe, Donald from Peak Records. It uh, wasn't yeah. a label that we were on, but they had some video facilities. And he kindly yeah. made the video. 
for us. And he recorded some video in, uh, in Wicklow, where, where Peak Records was based then, Wicklow, Ireland. And uh, we just, just kind of put it together. And great. I remember I re we were in Wicklow. Pardon? I really love it, yeah. When we were in Wicklow, it was funny because uh, there was a, a country player who was, uh, Garth Brooks was touring at the time. And he was huge. And I was wearing this suede jacket with, uh, with fringe on it. And like we went into uh, a coffee shop and then, and everybody suddenly thought we were with Garth Brooks and, and was treating us really, really nice, really, really nice. And they go, where's Garth? You know, cause we had the video equipment and stuff and I'm going, who, you know what? And uh, the video crew knew who, what they were talking about. And it was yeah. like, it was, uh, you know, it was interesting. It was, it was funny. Cause we have, we're not like Garth Brooks at all. So, you know, it was, it was just, you know, whatever. it was fun. Nice. nice. So I would say dear listeners uh, and dear Debbie, let's just listen to the song and uh, we will catch up and dream after the song. Yeah. What's the title of the song? Is it? It's Spoke called Desert. Desert. Mm. So, so dear Desert by Screech Owls. Uh, Screech S C R E H Screech Owls. It's an actual owl, and uh, you can yes. in Ireland and in the west coast of America. Yeah, as so, it happens. So, 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 so listen. Else. Bye, bye. Um, a minute. Uh, in a desert of his own making he lived in a mansion now it's a slum now it's abandoned he tries to make time stand still sand shining years in an hourglass he lives in the present but he lives for the past out in the salt flat with a three-legged cat he likes to watch him as he sidewinds around the desert sand he wouldn't trade that rag heel cat for any woman child or man He tries to make time stand still. He knows he never can, and he knows he never will. Taped to his wall is a yellow photograph of his ex-wife and his three kids. He hardly knows who they are. They don't even know where he is. He tears the picture off the wall and he stares at it for a long while and for one brief moment he can't make time stand still and the moment passes and he can never make that moment last he puts the picture in his wallet and he gets in his truck and he drives out to the Amboy Bar and Grill and there's people there like him with their photographs dog-eared and beer-stained and stories to tell lost love and alienation and things that went wrong and way after the last round way past closing time he finds himself alone again and he says out loud though there's no one for my Lives in a desert 
of his own making. He lived in a mansion. Now it's a slum. Now it's abandoned. Now that's, that's Martin, our, our bass player extraordinaire, and he plays multi instruments. And that's me, and that's I've got Martin's rat on my shoulder. Oh and yes, Evans, Dick Evans, who uh, he was our guitarist and my co-writer, and right. he the Virgin Prunes. Yeah, it was a nice song. It's really I I, I really like, it. and um, I was wondering uh, because. You are speaking there about your father, don't you? Always. Yeah, my father was in a desert of his own making. Uh, yeah, some of it's autobiographical, some of it isn't. Uh, you know, my father and I, when when uh, you know when they when my parents divorced, I didn't really see a whole lot of him after that. You know, he was kind of a troubled soul. Um, you know, some some of it's true, some of it's not. My father never lived in a desert. My mother did. Um, okay. Okay. But that that feeling of estrangement, you know, is. Yeah. I would say, should, shall we come to the desert back into the in the third part? Um, and uh, uh, and I would I would say, um, dear listeners, if uh, what I'm gonna do is I put all the links from the videos and 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 the informations from from Debbie um, into my um, description because Debbie is already on the way record um, a new a new album uh, so what I'm gonna put the, the, your Instagram account is at Debbie Shaw it's, Deb it's, uh, it's my name D-E-B-B-I-E S-C-H-O-W uh, yeah. the American spelling of my name um, yeah. at Instagram it's it's uh, you've got a link I guess you'll put the link up at some point I'll put a shells, uh, link up but I'll do that after we release something Hopefully, this summer. This summer. This you know. Hopefully, well, it will yeah, be this year. I mean, if you if you're in Ireland, come over here, and we're gonna go here in West Cork, and and uh, we're gonna promote your your record a little bit. I'm hoping. I'm hoping this year, this summer. Uh, summers are brutal here in the desert, so I'm hoping in the summer to to come up to Dublin. I miss my friends a lot, and I'm hoping to go to, and and probably Limerick and Cork. Definitely Cork. I love Cork. It's a beautiful place. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. And Galway, you know, there's I just, there's. I just I just applied today for, uh, for 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 a house, Cork. Ah, congratulations, congratulations. I, I, I just if, I'm not sure if if, if I get it. It's it, it's 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 belly belly skinnix somehow. It's it's, it's ah, from the beach away, you know. So it's it's, it's lovely. Oh, know. nice. Oh, yeah. well, good luck. You know, not good and all that. Fingers crossed, really, because yeah. because yeah, this house. I, I is, this house my first house uh, just a few years ago and I didn't think I'd be able to buy a home. And, and one of my friends worked in a mortgage company and said, yeah, you can. And I did. And I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm Happy. renovating it and I'm really busy with renovations, but um, that, that's, I really that's great. like having a nice place. You We're going to go in the third part in, into that again as well. We're going to okay. do that. Otherwise, okay. we 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 gonna running out with 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 record time. It's just hours uh, at this this podcast host company. Uh, it seems to work, which is great. I would say, yeah. Debbie, thank you very much for having you in, in in the art show. It's lovely to talk with you. Um, and dear listeners, if you want to support this podcast, because it is it is. Uh, listener support a podcast you can donate something on my website it's www.altitude.com like like here my myself i have it on today and uh i, I wear today just for debbie no for you as for, for the listeners as well uh um so you can get it there on this page as well you can get uh, debbie's debbie's max um uh, Altitude Max there. Um, you can as well um, go on and welcome to, to, to join our I Love West Cork Artists group uh, because it's a very lively group and, and this group shares artwork by themselves from friends or so, you know. That's on the Facebook page. Um, Instagram at, that, at 
attitude and at I love Westcock artists, like you can see here somehow. That's what I have to say. That we see us, um, yeah, on the next in the morning, and we have an early confession, okay? It's lunch. It's lunch. You have listened to Artitude, West Cork's first art, fashion, and design podcast. Artitude, never so close again. Ah! That was too close.